Hello everyone, this is Mitch, and welcome to yet another Kerbal Space Program episode. So today we are actually going to Mohoho. Yes, I am very sorry for this pun, but it had to be done. <laughs> yes, it's a little late, I am recording this probably a few days before this is going up. Uh, it's just after Christmas, and yep, we are going to Moho. Um, if you're interested into, in the details of the mission or in the spacecraft I'm going to be using, actually I'm going to be sending two, although I will only show one. Um, if you're interested in that kind of stuff, uh, I invite you to watch the previous episode if you haven't done so already. And so I'm going to do a long story short recap really quickly. How are we going to do this? Well, we are basically not waiting for a launch window to Moho. Because reasons, and um, basically because Moho is super inclined, it's also super close to the sun, uh, or Kerbal, or however we want to call this um, star, and, well, the Delta V, or the fuel requirements to get ourselves from Kerbin to Moho are largely, not entirely, but there, there's a lot of it that goes into changing planes. And the way around this is as follows. So very scientific methods here. We're going to go into the uh, station here. Sorry, <laughs> blanking out for a minute. So we are going to look at our relay, our interplanetary relay, for a very simple reason, which you will see in a moment. It's actually really simple. So, oh, we're loading perfectly. So there's Kerbin. There's the sun, and somewhere around the sun is Moho. Now, to get to Moho, and to figure out a good time... Oh, we're actually kind of past it, aren't we? That's kind of annoying, because the symbol... Well, whatever, close enough. Here, <laughs> basically, I targeted Moho with a ship well, basically a satellite that's in orbit around the Sun, as opposed to around Kerbin, which allowed me to target Moho, which then allows me to see the ascending node and the sending nodes. And this is important because we want to launch into the right plane. And the easiest way to do this is by being, basically, having the launch pad at the ascending or descending nodes. Now, that's not going to be super precise. As you can see, Kerbin is not actually exactly where the icon is. And the icon kind of looks like it's just past it, actually. I'm kind of surprised. This is, uh, well, whatever. In stellar scale, as you can see, this is pretty close. This is good enough. So there we are. This is how you figure out uh, when Kerbin is at the right position to do this. And then another very scientific way of doing things. Let's go back to the tracking station. So basically you want to launch at noon because you want the space center to be aligned with the sun so that we can perfectly match the plane of Mo. well, as closely as possible. And the way to do this, again, super scientific. There's the horizon between uh, day and night around Kerbin. This is the space center where the signals are reaching to the ground. And now all we have to do is to accelerate until this is basically at noon. So it's rotating, 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 and good enough. So now it's noon above the space center. And we are ready for our first launch. So I will quickly show you the first rocket. I think I'm gonna start with the uh, satellite. Basically I'm sending a relay satellite to Moho. Um, it's not critical for this mission in particular. It'll, it would be useful if uh, we got it in place and it, uh, it worked. <laughs> But um, it shouldn't be dramatic if it's not working out exactly as intended. But it could be useful in the future to get signal, you know, bouncing around the sun or something like that. So we're going to be sending a relatively cheap... Uh, no. 
this is the one moho relay satellite series we're going to be sending this around moho it's entirely you know remote controlled so that's fine launch vessel so we're going to be using this to get strong signal around moho and maybe bounce the signal around the system so i suppose i'll show you a little clip of me launching this rocket really quickly and then we're gonna skip right ahead to the main mission so I'm gonna probably insert a cut right here and we'll see each other in a moment and I'm back and although I recorded the whole thing for the satellite I decided not to show it and I will explain why right away because this is kind of important uh, the launch was actually uh, pretty good uh, it went actually stupendously great by my standards, but I made a little big mistake, and I'll explain why right now. Basically, this is Kerbin, right? And as you can see right now, the satellite is orbiting like that. And if we can see Mo's orbit, it's the other way around. And I mimicked Mo's orbit up pretty nicely right from the get-go on my first launch but I neglected a little thing here um, Kerbin is going this way so is Moho they're uh, rotating in the same direction obviously because this would be a lot harder if they weren't but the thing is Moho is on a lower plane so I want to leave to go to Moho going retrograde so this way not that way and that's kind of important because if I replicate Mo's orbit around Kerbin well Mo's orbit around the Sun uh, with my satellite orbiting Kerbin I would be going the opposite way from this satellite but that's not really the way I want to go because if I do that when I'm going retrograde with regards to well, Kerbin's orbit, I'm actually going up. I'm going north. And that's very important because to go towards Moho, as you can see, I have to go south. I have to go north towards the south. So that's actually the opposite way. So you have to mimic the orbit in a mirror way. Because otherwise, you'll waste all the fuel that I told you you would save by doing the plane change or basically by launching on the right plane straight from the uh, launch pad so without further ado let's go back to this monstrosity and let's launch it around Kerbin and get it ready to go so countdown maybe nah not much for uh, traditions here we go boom just like that so again I might cut because, well, you've seen me launch rockets a million times by now. But that's basically the gist of it. So as you can see, you can look at the editing display below. And you'll see that I'm basically keeping it around 110. And I'll let it go down to about 100. And I'll keep it just about there for most of the trip. So, again, I'll see you in another moment. And I'm back. So here we are in orbit with fumes left on the initial stage. Well, it's not exactly the initial stage, but still. So we got a little bit of fuel left in there and we are ready to go, basically. So I'm going to show you the maneuver node I'm going to use. Now, here's a second boo-boo because since I'd already screwed up the first time, I decided to test things a little bit and I quickly noticed that, well, let me show you, basically. Um, we're going to want our maneuver node to be around there. And we're going to want to go a significant ways away from Kerbin. Something like that. Now, let us target Moho. That's actually sort of close. Let's fix the inclination a little bit. Alright, something like that. 
Now see, I actually forced this encounter. Now as you can see our periapsis is there and if I mess around with this enough see if I keep doing this I can actually force an encounter on our first pass around Moe's orbit and there we go we're just about there See, it just flashed. Now, why is this bad? Well, our periapsis is there. It's not quite... I mean, it's close enough. But the encounter itself, let's actually try to show it. There we go. It's a fair bit away. So... If we were to encounter Moho like that, uh, the difference in trajectory is actually quite significant. If I were to encounter Moho near the ascending node, now that wouldn't be such a big problem. But encountering Moho that far from our periapsis, um, it's a significant fuel cost. And with Moho, it goes really fast. So what I'm probably going to do is I'm, if, if I'm going to do, no, it's um, basically I'm going to do this maneuver pretty much, uh, of course, without the uh, adjustment, the uh, radial adjustments to force the encounter. And I'm basically going to slow down around my periapsis around Moho to get an encounter on my second pass because as you can see this is not even a year i mean for a real mission that'd be pretty significant although for a trip that long you're still probably looking for a, a ship that's fairly sustainable but either way it'll be much better for our fuel consumption if we actually try to smooth into to ease into uh an orbit around moho rather than force it. So let's actually cancel this because I fiddled with the radial enough that I'm not willing to bother trying to fix it. So let's go again, about 2.3 thousand meters per second, which is actually well within predictions. Uh, if we look around here, curb into Moho, plot it. And that's the ideal, at an ideal launch time. I mean, arguably we did actually manage to launch at a fairly convenient time according to this so that sure helps but actually there's probably a way just by moving the time yeah let's try this because this can make a significant change in the duration of the trip and in doing so the location of Moho is also going to be different when we arrive. So maybe we can actually get there on our first pass. It's not... It's not a dream. <laughs> At least according to uh, the uh, launch window planner. Uh, what happens if we do this? Not quite... But you could very well just do this maneuver, get near periapsis, you're, well, you have to fix the uh, the inclination a little bit, that'll help. See if we do something like that, it's looking much better. Better still, half a degree, still half a degree, point three. Two, let's try to get point one. Is that point one? I think it's point one. It's point one. Okay, so if you were to do this, oh, see, we're already kind of close. It's much, it's already much better. So if we tweak this a little bit, and then once we get there, even if we don't get an encounter, you can burn retrograde and just mess around 
and try to catch it on the next pass. Because Moho orbits really fast, so you're not going to take years um, in time acceleration getting there. It, you might take a year doing two or three passes and fixing your trajectory, but it should be nice like that. So I'm going to put yet another cut in here and mess with the uh, with the transfer nodes, uh, maneuvers, maneuver nodes. There we go. There we go. That's the word I'm looking for. Maneuver node. And until I get something decent, and then we'll see each other again. So, see you in a moment. And back again. So, look at the crazy maneuver node I actually managed to get. So, technically this should take us almost 2.3 thousand meters per second of delta V to get there. I actually managed with 2.2, that's probably because I launched... Um, at an incline, a pre-incline, so that saved us a little bit of fuel. Now I don't usually uh, bother making perfect maneuver nodes, uh, nowhere near this perfect anyway. So basically we're getting an encounter really close to our periapsis, so this is really great on the first pass. So I'll be doing that with this ship, I'll be doing that with the satellite, I'll be doing all that. I'll probably be making uh, slight adjustments in space, and I'll see you when we're there. So, look forward to it. And here we are. So, I'm almost sad I didn't record the uh, transfer nodes and everything because it went far better than I would have ever expected. Um, we have pretty much the fuel I expected to have. Uh, I already ditched the previous stage, uh, the satellites in orbit, as you can see, we have signal right over here, and this gets bounced back to Kerbin with a high signal strength, and there we go, we are in orbit around Moho, I've already taken the liberty of gathering the science high and low in space, and now we're gonna go for a landing, and hopefully it'll go well. <laughs> So we have the probe here, which will let us use the scientist to make the landing. Um, of course, we have to go for the bright side of the planet for a couple of reasons. One, because the satellite's going to spend the most time uh, over the bright, the lit area, day area around Moho. And Moho actually rotates really slowly. It's basically half a year of a day and half a year a night. So if we land at night, it's going to be night for the whole mission. So let's see who's in the crew cabin. Transfer crew. Yes, I have the pilot in the cabin, Valentina. And let us transfer Bob into the lander stage. Now, I have this in pretty low orbit, as you can see, it's uh, between uh, 15 and 16 kilometers up. A uh, few reasons for that. One, it's going to be easier to dock back with the lander, well, with the return stage. Uh, if it's in lower orbit, it just takes less fuel, so that's that. Um, one thing also, uh, technically the orbit is still a little inclined. I think we can see this here somewhere. Yes, we have an inclination of 5 degrees. Normally this could be a bit of a problem because the planet would be rotating and then when we lift off, we, well, we wouldn't be exactly on the same orbit. For MOHO, this isn't such a big problem because as I said, it rotates so slowly that it probably won't make much of a difference at all. So, where is Bob? Is Bob in the crew cabin? I think he is. Actually, there's a button. Interior overlay. Yeah, we've got... I think that's Bob. Yeah, that's Bob. You can see him here. Alright, so we are going to undock. And we're going to get ready for a landing. Actually, this may already be a little close. Or not. Let's see. So, decouple node, here we go, switch to the lander, and point the lander retrograde. Get some distance, 
The engines are ready to go. That's good. So let's say goodbye to the return stage for now. We still have strong signal. Very good. All right, so let's get ready to land. Hopefully, I'd like to land in the crater. Maybe a little hard to do, or not at all. Hopefully, we can find a sufficiently flat surface to land safely. So the orbital speed is pretty high. Uh, Suborbital space flight, very good, thank you. Um, here we go. So we're gonna wait a little longer until we're closer to the crater I want to land in. Hopefully we won't make a crater when we land. That would be very sad. Let's actually deploy the landing gear already. We're in space, there's no atmosphere, so they won't catch drag. And let's start slowing down. So far so good. I'm still kind of worried about the orbital speed being so high. Since our altitude is actually pretty low. So it makes uh, the rendezvous with the return stage easier, but it sure makes me a little nervous to uh, just smack into the ground. So once we're well and over the crater's edge, I'm gonna fire maximum throttle and try to land in here hopefully the crater is fairly flat I haven't looked up uh, moho for flat surfaces very much so I have no idea this could be this could be hard <laughs> could be a hard landing all right so we're well over the crater now I'm gonna fire maximum throttle Reduce our horizontal velocity as much as possible. I'm gonna slightly follow the retrograde, not perfectly, because I do want to just, to just uh, remove all the horizontal velocity first. But I want to make sure I don't have too much vertical velocity either. So we're nearing half our fuel. Let's keep firing. Getting worried about the altitude. And the fuel because well, we need to take off. <laughs> Alright, the horizontal velocity is almost perfectly taken care of. Now we're gonna old retrograde, slow our descent. This actually looks pretty nice. Slow ourselves again. Now I want to try to avoid bouncing so and wasting too much fuel. This is looking nice. We're looking a little low on fuel though, which worries me quite a bit. Here we go, nice and gentle.
and touchdown. Perfect. We have landed on the surface of Moho. Thank you, world first milestones. Here we are, Moho. This is a tough planet for a lot of people because of the Delta V uh, involved. So I'm quite happy it went so well. So log seismic data, gravimetric data, well, the barometer kind of a funny thing. Space, temperature, crew report, materials bay, mystery goo, and let's all congratulate Bob Kerman on his first trip outside of the Kerman sphere of influence. Let's collect the data. Collect this. Restore, why not? Restore. Take. Take. Take and take. Take and store. EVA report. Getting very odd in here. Yeah, yeah. The hottest planet, it's not so bad actually on the surface. I have the radiator panels, but I don't think we really need them at this point. Um, temperature's done. Let's actually go down on the surface. And here we are. Crater of Moho with the sun shining really bright above. And a little bit of a graphical glitch here. Very nice. Hopefully we're not stuck. Let's go a little further. Plant our flag. Here we go. Bob Kerman on Moho planting flag. Site name, Moho Crater, exclamation mark. Doesn't really look like an exclamation mark of this size, but whatever, it's supposed to be one. Plate text, um, huge step for Kerbals, and a huge step for Kerbal kind. Bob. So let's take a surface sample. Good science. Very nice. Let's actually fly back there. Here we go. Oops. Sorry, Bob bit of a bump there so with this we'll be left with Eve and the jewel system jewel shouldn't really be the artist place but if we want to do a jewel 5 and visit all of the moons of jewel in one session it would be pretty hard but still I'm quite happy with going to Moho like this very very well so far so good really <laughs> I'm gonna try not to jinx it because the fuel is looking a little low to catch up with the the return stage but the return stage has plenty of fuel which uh, should really make this easy so planet of flag very good we've collected all the science as far as I can tell do I have a crew report let's take another crew report why not and here we go so now we're gonna have to wait for the return stage to get closer um, we can actually fly the return stage, however, I think. Let's actually try. Let's quick save just in case. Do something stupid and let's switch to the return stage. Can we fly it? I believe we can. Is there a probe on this thing? There is a probe core. So we can fly it if something goes 
awfully wrong for whatever reason. Uh, no, we cannot, actually, because the engine is behind a docking port, and we need that docking port to get Bob inside. So if things go wrong, well, we're just gonna have to make do with the lander. Um, let's actually switch back to the lander, because we can time accelerate faster that way. Now we're gonna eyeball the rendezvous. Here we go, set as target. Ooh, choppy. What's... okay. Uh, no, it's not fixed. I'm not sure why it's so choppy right now. Whoa. Whatever did I do? Okay. This is weird. What kind of frames are we getting? 30 for whatever reason. Okay. So I'll be back in a second. I need to check out why we were losing frames just like that. It's kind of crazy. So be back in a second. All right. Well, I just restarted the game. We're still losing some frames, but it's not a, quite as bad. So I guess we'll just stick with it. So I just time accelerated a little bit. I'm waiting for the lander to get a little bit closer. And then we're going to try to rendezvous with it. Hopefully we have enough fuel. Time accelerate a little bit more. It's getting kind of kind of close. Um, do we want to get closer? I guess we do. All right, that's kind of comfortable. So let's go for it. Uh, Hopefully, as I said, we've got enough fuel, because if we don't, well, it's going to be kind of sad. So far, so good. Actually, I'm going to cut thrust right now, because it's going to be more efficient if we burn at apoapsis. I feel like we're cutting it a little close. Worst case scenario, we can probably just uh, EVA out of the lander with the <laughs> data in our ends and just fly by hand uh, to the return vehicle, which wouldn't be so good. I think we can actually enter the vehicle from the docking port, maybe. Ideally, we can. Let's get closer to our apoapsis. A little bit more. Let's start burning again. First order of business is getting back into orbit. Oh my. Did we mess up? Seems like we are a little close on fuel, although we should be fine. Not quite in orbit yet. I think I'm going to use the um, RCS a little bit. See if I can push it up a little further that way oh we might be in trouble oh we might be in trouble I think we can make orbit Oh, just, I think. Is there a container that's actually not... No, it would read... 
how are we so short on fuel? Wow, if we make orbit with the RCS, I'm going to be impressed. We did. <laughs> okay. Can we get to a safe height? We can. Okay, apparently we can actually salvage this using the RCS, it seems. It's going to be a little tighter than I... <laughs> that I first expected. I mean, that's really not ideal. Okay, let's see here. Well, first off, we want to wait. Yeah, we want to wait until we get to the descending node. Try to match inclinations. So let's speed things up. Sadly, times 10 is all we can do at this altitude. Wow, talk about cutting it close. Now, if we can't dock this this thing, it may be a problem because, as I said, there is there isn't actually an entrance to the return stage uh, if we don't dock. So this may really be a bit of a problem. Let's see. Descending node in a few minutes. Coming up. Well, that's what I get for saying that this mission went so well so far. Alright, so we're getting there. Let's start pointing the vehicle in the right direction. Because we don't have the luxury of spare fuel. Let's see here. Okay, this is working. Very good. All right. Let's first fix the inclination as much as possible. We may have to work with a few fractions of a degree off because we really want to save the fuel. Oh, do we have a rendezvous point? No, not yet. All right, good enough for this. Periapsis is a little low. Apoapsis is pretty much on the mark. We're going to aim for a rendezvous as soon as possible. Now we, we are ahead, so we want... Oops, I'm doing full circles. We are ahead, so we do want to slow down a little bit compared to uh, the return stage. All right. And for that, we need to go prograde. As we can see, it doesn't take much to move. Oh, wow, it really doesn't take much. Okay, seems like we'll be fine. So let's actually turn around. 
get ready for apoapsis ahead of time. So cutting it close, but it should be fine. I think I'm gonna cut this out though, because simply it's gonna take me a few minutes, especially uh, just warping times 10. And the video I believe is already above 30 minutes. So I'm gonna spare you the fiddling around. And I think I'm gonna spare you the, the actual return to Kerbin since uh, this part I am sure has plenty of fuel it has uh, actually a lot more fuel than it needs. In fact, let's take a look while we're time accelerating. We're going from Moho back to Kerbin, and I believe, yeah, so 4,000 meters per second. We have like 5,000 in the return stage. So even if I screw up real bad, I can actually uh, get back in orbit around Kerbin. And mind you, we don't need to get into orbit. We actually just need to, uh, hit the atmosphere slow enough that we don't uh, destroy the vehicle but if we hit the atmosphere we're not gonna miss Kerbin anyway um, and it's just a matter of slowing down enough so I'm gonna put another cut in here and I'm gonna see you uh, basically in the aftermath of this mission which has been pretty much a success for everything I'm a little surprised that the lander doesn't have quite the fuel to uh, make it back to orbit on uh, the uh, main engines, but it has enough monopropellant, so we'll be fine. All right, so as you can see, we're back. Um, docking the uh, the module wasn't so bad. Uh, the really the worst part is for some reason I've experienced some frame loss, and I really can't explain it, but. We're back. I managed. It was really painful. I got below 10 frames per second at some point. I had to restart the game multiple times. I also had to uh, mess around with the uh, the uh, satellite because, well, we didn't get signal on the dark side. As I told you before, the satellite spent most of its time on the bright side of Moho. So, yeah, I had to mess with that. Uh, fun times. But we are back, and while I was um, time warping to get to a point where we could launch back from Moho and get a good uh, launch window, uh, I actually managed to pick up the Explore Moho contract. And I didn't expect it to complete, but it did. So here we are. Let's recover the vessel and see what happens. What shall we get from this mission? Hopefully not a crash. A little loading thing here. No, I think it's gonna work. Are we still losing frames? Maybe. At least we don't need frames to read the screen. All right, so we got 671 signs, that's it? Really? Okay, I'm a little underwhelmed, let's say. Got a fair bit. I mean, it's not bad, but I expected a little bit more. What did we get? Crew report in space near Moho. Gravity scan, atmospheric pressure, crew report, EVA. Materials, materials, temperature fairly sure we should have a surface sample. We do. I guess Moho is just not worth that much science for whatever reason. Now, we didn't return much and we returned it pretty far. Well, it wasn't that bad, but it's still nowhere near the cost. Oh, I see, that's what I meant by frame loss. Watch my mouse. Whoops. And skipping around. Anyways. And the crew got some really good experience. Bob got to level 4. So did Valentina. So really good. The best part is really uh, being able to grab the contract last minute. That's... If you can look at the top here, you can see we got a lot of money from it. Let's actually look. Whoa. This is tough. Alright. 
Explore Moho, 284,000, almost 85, um, plus science and what's it called? Reputation, good, awesome. Can remove that. The other part of Explore Moho, other, other part. World first milestones and the explore mo so really really good return for our money there uh, i think we made close to a million actually since we managed to get the contract uh which is really good because uh we didn't get as much science and science equals money in this case because of the whoops wrong screen because of this policy we have here, patents licensing, where we basically give up half our science for money. So really good. So get money here. For a second, I thought that read Manly for Scott Manly. That would have been a nice uh, reference because the guy does a lot of good videos for Kerbal Space Program. Anyways, that was it for me. I hope you found this entertaining, fun, helpful, all these good stuff. Uh, leave comments if you did, subscribe if you haven't, and that's it for me for today. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.